MD-80s were the backbone of the American Airlines fleet with 350 models in service. On September 4th, 2019, that number was down to one. Join us today in recreating that final flight. You can use the Laminar MD-80 included with X-Plane 11 to recreate this flight. You'll want to set the departure date to September 4th and a local time that allows you to make a 9 a.m. departure. We're going to use the real current weather setting, although you could find that day's weather and try and simulate it. The departure airport is KDFW for Dallas-Fort Worth and the aircraft departed from gate C2, as you can see from this Airways Magazine Instagram post from the actual flight. We're going to set up using simbrief.com to generate a comparable flight plan to the real one. We're going to select the default MD-82 with an origin of KDFW and a destination of KORD for Chicago O'Hare. Departure runways and arrival runways can vary depending on the wind. The real flight's route can be selected or inserted into simbrief. Changing the runways earlier may also alter the SID and STAR on this. This routing may change also over time as AIRAC cycles update. We'll include the original route in this video's description if you want to copy and paste it. If you need help operating the default MD-82, be sure to see our tutorial. The original flight map, shown here on the right, can be inserted into skyvector.com if you'd like to see the airways we'll be transiting today over the course of the flight. If you need more help using simbrief.com, or checking these other flight resources such as FlightAware and flight stats for real-world flight information, be sure to check out our airline flight planning tutorial. Earlier in this video I called for ground equipment since we're at a default airport. Now you can see the fuel truck is arriving. Here's a snip from our sim brief showing the block fuel of 25,490 pounds planned for today's trip. Use the weight and fuel menu at the top to set that amount for the aircraft. Using this routing strip from the Simbrief, we're going to initialize the default FMC first by inputting our departure airport. I've brought up the pop-out because I like using the keyboard to type it in rather than clicking on screen. KDFW is our departure or origin and our destination is Chicago O'Hare, K-O-R-D. The actual flight number for today is American Airlines 80, symbolizing the Super 80 for the last flight. We're going to check the ATIS automatic terminal information system by tuning up the radio. This way we can see if the winds are appropriate to use the runway that has been selected in our sim brief of 17 right. Dallas Fort Worth INTL information X-ray. 1300 Zulu weather. Wind you can see that 17 right isn't available current departure runway. So we will continue and input that into the FMC. Again, in case you clicked by it earlier in the video, we do have a tutorial for the MD-80 as well as a tutorial on flight planning that will go over all of these details for using ATIS and the SIMBRIEF should you need more information than we're providing in this quick overview today. Now that we know our departure runway is definitely 17 right, it doesn't hurt to take a peek and see what our taxi route is from the stand. As mentioned, we can now enter the route into the FMC. We don't have too many waypoints today, but if you look at the routing strip, one thing I like to point out every time we get to this, DCT is not a VOR, it stands for direct. So don't try and input DCT because it's not going to work. The center image shows the flight details of the actual flight from flightaware.com. 
You can see the actual routing is listed there above the aircraft pictures, and our routing strip from our OFP above the FMC matches it. You'll notice as we select this departure procedure, the standard instrument departure, or SID, it needs to match the runway because not all SIDs connect to all runways. We could input the arrival at this point, but I'm not going to. We're just simply going to check for discontinuities, which would be gaps in the flight plan, and there are none. The real flight had filed for a flight level of 250, but actually flew at 290. You can see our briefing strip shows us at a flight level of 330, because that is most appropriate to the winds we have today. Now that the FMC is set, let's set our altimeter so that we have accurate altitude information. The ATIS was 2996, and we're going to set both the captains and the first officers. There is a standby altimeter, but it sets automatically in this. Again, using Navigraph charts through the Avitab, you can see the entire SID, the standard instrument departure. Pretty much the runways are all brought out on different routings and then brought back together for this northbound departure. Now we're going to open the air bleed so that we can power the engines. We're also going to need this hydraulic pump at this point. Again, a reminder, we do have a full tutorial on the channel. Using the better pushback plug-in, we're going to call for our pushback. And while we're pushing back, we can begin our engine start. In a moment, this video is going to stop talking about the planning, and it's going to mostly be music and just a short cinematic version of the rest of the flight. We will pop back in with some arrival information using the star, as well as the arrival runway at the end. If you have any questions about operating this aircraft or how the aircraft flew that day, feel free to leave us comments or chat with us on social media. Flight Brothers is active on Instagram and a number of Facebook forums.
American 80 DSW time, runway 18 left, line up and wait. 20 left, line up and wait for the last time in an MD-80, American... American 80 for the last time, uh, wind 1005, RNAV to B Park, runway 18 left, clear for takeoff. RNAV B Park, uh, clear for takeoff, 18 left, American 80. W. Better make it a good one. Give it up. American 80, Paul, have a good day. American 80, so long. Welcome back. We're now flying the Turtle 5 Arrival into Chicago O'Hare. I've been using a lot of time compression, so if you're wondering why everything appears to be going fast, that's why. We're going to pull up our ATIS, and winds are light and variable, visibility is 10, altimeter is 30.07. I'm going to tune the ILS for runway 4 right, which is our arrival runway. You can see it right there, and we'll be coming into the terminal. We're going to K5, that is our gate. You can see it's kind of on the uh, northeast side there, so we'll need to taxi into there. Even though I've tuned the ILS, we're actually flying an RNAV approach to runway four right. I just like to have the ILS prepped just in case. So here is the RNAV approach that we are flying. You can see we're proceeding down it rather quickly since I've sped things up. And at waypoint forts, that begins our three degree descent down to the runway.
We hope you've enjoyed our recreation of the final flight of American Airlines Mad Dog MD-80. If you'd like to recreate the flight, all of these resources are from flightaware.com, flightstats.com, and we planned using Simbrief and Navigraph charts. Even though the Mad Dog is done with American Airlines, it's going to live on forever in X-Plane, so be sure to see our tutorial and keep it flying in the Sim skies. This is the Flight Brothers. Plan the flight and fly the plan.